Tony O'Donovan, welcome to the show. Thank you for your time. How are you? I'm very well, Daniel. Very well. Um, things are good. And uh, hopefully things are good with you in Germany as well. Absolutely, yeah. Tony, I want to start right over with asking you about your role at no other than Tesco, one of the biggest uh, supermarket chains and companies in the world. Um, what do you do with Tesco? So my role, Daniel, in Tesco is to head up pest control uh, for group. And what that means is um, I help put together strategies and development um, and what good looks like for, for pesco, pest control within Tesco. Um, and I've been doing that for a couple of couple of years now. Um, I've been in the pest control industry for, for 25 years. Um, but my role within Tesco is, is really being that um, guidance within the business, if you like, to, to what we should be doing in the coming years around a strategy for pest control, not only in the UK, but um, overseas, where Tesco's are as well overseas. Um, and making sure the rest of the business understand the importance, which they, which I, I must admit they're very, very good at, um, and and understanding the journey that we want to go on and why we want to change how we develop and how we deliver um, pest control within Tesco's. And I think that's going to be the main topic for today, Tony. We discussed the schedule already. Uh, we're going to talk about your development in pest control, as you just said, because I know you at Tesco, you guys are working extremely hard on finding new strategies on how to manage pests, and you're doing that extremely well. This is why I'm super keen to have you on the show. Before we start, though, with the main topic, I uh, would like a few, uh, just a short glimpse on how you dealt with COVID. I know that um, pest control is a key industry. You said you had uh, next to zero impact impact on service delivery? Yeah, we, we really haven't found, Daniel, um, a, a much of a, an impact on us as, as, a, as a client um, around service delivery for pest control. Um, um, we've always deemed um, pest control companies and, and employees as essential workers, um, and, and we haven't had an impact um, around service delivery at all. Um, across the board. So, so we've been probably fairly fortunate. Um, obviously, all our sites and stores have been operating um, through the lockdown uh, period. Um, but around service delivery, we, we've been very fortunate and uh, we really haven't had um, an impact at all. It's been, it's been quite a positive response from, from our side around the pest control um, delivery and service that we've, we've received. Mm -hmm. to over 6,000 6, stores, I think, not in the UK alone, but worldwide over 6,000? Uh, worldwide, I think it's probably close to 7,000 stores mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. probably close to 4,000 um, in the UK. In yeah, the UK. so again, another thought on uh, pest managers. It makes sense to support the food industry and people that bring products to market like yourselves. Uh, thank you so much for that. I want to now start talking about uh, your journey when it came to digital pest control devices and the future of pest control at Tesco, but also why you started thinking that things could be done better. I know you have you have broad um, uh, a background in pest control over 25 years and you know that pest control has been more or less the same for the past 20, uh, 25 years and not, not much changed. And you've now decided for some various reasons that, that at Tesco some things will change. Um, can you tell everybody maybe your story about why that has, has been brought into your attention and what you try to change, what the issues were? And then we're going to uh, make our way forward towards the, the solution. Okay, well, um, I, I, I've been, as you say, been in pest control for a long time and I've always liked innovation. I've always liked the way the pest control industry is looking to change and develop. Um, I saw uh, what was going on around legislation, not only in the UK, but in Europe as well. Mm. And some of the, um, the restrictions, perhaps, that could be coming um, the pest control companies why in the industry's why in the coming years around rodenticide. And I really started to look at what for a, for a portfolio like ours, which is everything from transport to distribution to retail across up to 4,000 sites, how that could look and how that should look in the coming years. And how is that robust enough to, to deal with the challenges that, that we would face um, you know, two, three, four years down the line. Mm. And and really what's out in the markets and and what would be best for us as a, as a client and and where we should be um, 
really should we be pitching ourselves around what level of service we should receive uh, and the type of service as well. Mm-hmm. So really almost taking it back to saying, so what's, what's out there? What could we use? Um, what can give us the information and the trends um, um, that we're looking for? And so, um, so yeah, we, we did uh, a lot of work looking into really where we'd like to be as a, as a business around pest mm. control and, and, and almost what, what we believe good should look like. So, so you, you also started, you just highlighted Redenticides as um, you did the status quo analysis at Tesco. You've seen all the reports, obviously, that are uh, omnipresent in all the uh, media in uh, pest control literature, that pest control um, tools like Rodenticides, anticoagulant Rodenticides are going to be uh, yeah, more and more restricted in some areas, even are not uh, super powerful anymore because of resistance of uh, rodents. So... What was it only sustainability um, approaches at Tesco that I'm sure you're looking at as well, um, or was it also that it was not good enough anymore when it came to uh, efficiency of that product uh, or that solution to uh, control and manage pests? Uh, I, I think uh, on the question, is it good enough? I think that, um, we could probably spend hours probably going over and debating that. I think there's certain elements um, that are effective um, around red inside baiting. Um, and, but I, do, I did see challenges coming. I did see that um, um, whether it's resistance issues or whether it's legislation um, and really what, what's best for, for the environment. And I've always thought that pest controllers um, generally aren't people who, who like to go around killing things. Actually, they're quite the opposite. They actually like their environment. And, um, and really, so what, what, what would be best? Where, where could we, we could take this? What would, what would be the best solution for us? But also, as a client, being able to give us the right information at the right time um, and information that we could actually use um, and we could actually look at our own business and say, how do we get better? How do we improve what we do? So it has to be, um, uh, it has to work both ways, really. It has to be effective, um, but it has to also give us the information and the data that we require and want. You um, earlier said uh, that data, you needed data with merit. Uh, data is, is gold, obviously, in the 21st century. And one of my other guests, um, Håkan Kjellberg, of, uh, in, uh, based at a company in Sweden, said uh, that knowing is better than guessing. Uh, a lot of your... Uh, um, analysis also took place on, on the basis that you want to gather more data to also forecast and manage um, everything you do better. Um, was data a huge um, uh, effect on, on how you uh, took yeah. this? Yeah, data, data is very, very important. Um, when you look at a, a portfolio of sites, which is 4,000 sites, for instance, and um, everything from distribution to retail, um, knowing and understanding what's going on and why is hugely important because then you can look to put fixes in place. Um, but also around recommendations. So um, tell us what we need to do as a client. Um, tell us how we can get better. Give us some data on the back of that that actually um, justifies us taking those steps and those, those, um, those challenges on. Um, and, and all of that is really what, what drives us as a business. Tell us how we can get better. Tell us about recommendations. Tell us um, how we can improve what we do as a client to help the pest control company be effective. So, um, yeah, data is um, uh, very important, very important, I think, in, in, for a client like us. Yeah. And, and then you, you said one of your key decisions, I think one of the biggest um, uh, takeaways from today's interview should be you've invested a lot into digital, took the decision that the way forward, Tesco is going to go with digital help us digital uh, devices that are going to bring you data to have better decision management. So, so, yeah, so, so, so then you're so getting, getting to that point where we understood what we wanted and we need. So where we are now as a business is we're rolling out um, what I'm told will be the largest connected technology contract for pest control anywhere in the world. So probably two-thirds of our estate at least will, will be connected technology, and that's both inside and outside. Um, so that's the step that we've taken. So it's quite a bold one, um, but without doubt, in my belief, it, it's the right one to take um, and really start to say, we understand technology is out there. We understand it's effective. Let's use it. Let's let's get out there and actually um, have that in our portfolio um, and actually 
use the benefits of that. Um, so that's the that's the the the, the, uh, the route we've taken, um, and at the moment we're rolling that out, um, and that's in the UK. Um, so yeah, at least two thirds of our estate will be connected technology uh, for monitoring purposes. Um, yeah, it'll be only connected technology, both inside and out. So wow. that's kind of where we've gone. That's hugely impressive for one of the industry leaders like yourselves to make that decision. And I think, you know, it's obvious that if you're talking about two thirds of your sites, we're talking not about hundreds or thousands, probably tens of thousands of devices uh, that you're installing into your sites that are delivering data every day. So we're going to talk about two, three figure millions of uh, alerts <laughs> or pieces of information <laughs> calls or whatever uh, per um, Internet of Things device, so intelligent trap, smart trap, whatever you want to call it, per year, which is impressive. And I think with all that data, you're going to be the very first in the world to actually measure what it does to a group and a corporate like yourself uh, to receive that data, manage it, and take actions of it. And hence my question, um, uh, obviously let you react to my statement, but uh, also my question would be, do you think pest control might change from reactive to proactive? Uh, I'd hope so. I'd hope so. Um, I think, yeah, for, for us, if you go back to data, I mean, even things like when the, when the device is activated, uh, how often it gets activated in a certain area, um, um, all of that type of data, what uh, recommendations are around it, it within that type of um environment in that type um, in that part of, of the building all of that type of information we can use and work on actually to improve so um, yeah it's um, it's it's hugely important for us to, to do something like that and, and have um, and have these devices and actually as well if you if, if we're taking out rodenticide and we're not actually having rodenticides anymore um, I, I think connected, my own view would be connected technology has a huge role to play in pest control going forward. Um, I'm not sure yet whether it's the the, the uh, be all and end all. And I like to think that you need to have other elements um, in your arsenal to turn to if, if needed. Um, but but, but um, when you're talking about monitoring, um, then I think, you know, I, I'm convinced that's really the way um, uh, both clients and the and the pest control industry should should be looking and should be moving. Um, I think, um, you know, perhaps if, if somebody like us can do it, and there's three thousand odd stores and 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 and, and, um, and uh, properties, then you know it can be done. I think in in, in almost any situation Absolutely anywhere yeah yeah and also i mean um, I, I also agree with you and and that's not because i'm biased because you know i think we're <laughs> data driven ideologists because you know bobby corrigan dr robert corrigan of the u.s uh, probably one of the uh, most well-known rodentologists of the world and rodent experts for pest control said that digital or connected technology um is a no-brainer because just you get more data and as a pest controller you have to act like a detective and uh you know the more information I, you have the i better. um but yeah, I love I love that, and, and my view has always been I think um, good pest controllers have um, an inquisitive mind. They <laughs> have a mind which is why. Tell me why. It's not about um, just killing things. It's about actually tell me why. I want to understand what's going on. Um, I want to understand why something is here. How do I stop it? How do I stop it reoccurring? How do all that kind of mind? I think uh, with a pest controller. Um, the data helps them. Yeah. So that data, you, know, you get that data back and it allows you then to start looking at, uh, at trends uh, and, and starting to try and understand um, why things happen. Mm -hmm. If you understand why, then perhaps you can, you can stop them from reoccurring. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, th I think hopefully with most pest controllers, they would, they, they would feel that, that, that inquisitive mindset, hopefully. <laughs> Pretty incredible news. I think everybody that's going to listen to that interview is going to be shook because everybody, if you're going to look on, um, you know, the industry leaders like Rentakill uh, or uh, anti cmax and you're going to go to their website, you're going to see connected and smart all over and also, you know, sustainability. What you're just telling is probably the world's biggest pest control contract going uh, to digital. So that's, that's probably the, the biggest news for a change in our industry. And obviously, you're probably partnering uh, with one of the industry leaders, uh, which, which would also be probably a good idea to do. 
And I think that could actually be the tipping point for what everybody the past 10 years, the past decade, um, spoke about so much, which was digital pest control and how could it change or affect our industry. As so many other industries were affected by digitization, now in an industry uh, like ours, which is really you know, there's so many boxes in various areas that are very, very hard to reach, like, you know, underneath some, uh, in a big warehouse, outdoors where you have, you know, in European, in European uh, areas, you have winter and you have summer. So it could be snowing, it could be uh, 30 degrees Celsius or something. Yeah. So I think uh, the reason why it took so long uh, was because it was not just an incremental process of some data stream we had to integrate as a program, but we also had to build the products and as you said, we pest control, we like our tools, and we are inquisitive. So we really, really went in d into detail that these products we think of are also made for the real world, right? I, I think so. And I think for me, um, I'm slightly biased because I love the pest control industry. I think that um, pest control companies and industries generally have an awful lot more to give and to say than actually is being recognized by most clients. Um, I think it is quite a skilled industry um, and my own personal view, and I might, I might be wrong, is that what I would think will happen over time with more and more technology is you will see a movement away from um, technicians as we understand them to be now and probably more and more of a view of most auditors. I, what we're after is the, the connected technology tells me information, but tell me other stuff. Give me your personal uh, yeah. opinion. Put a report together for me. Give me clear recommendations. Uh, and really upskilling um, the clients on actually how technical pest control can be, mm -hmm. actually how skilled the technical um, the uh, pest controllers can be. Um, and I think, you know, I, ho I hope that pest um Pest control industry changes and adapts with technology to actually be seen as a far higher skilled um, service delivery than actually it is at the moment. Um, and I'm hoping that the technology kind of helps and, and takes it down. Me too. Does that, does that make sense, Daniel? Does for me personally, this is what I live and breathe for, Tony. I love pest control as well. It was For me, it was music to my ears uh, uh, listening to what you just said because my mission mainly with a, also some products that I, I, I try to support and we make is to elevate uh, pest managers, technicians, um, you know, technical directors, companies, businesses, our industry uh, on another level because we are not bait box checkers and we are not the bad people that throw around with poison. We're actually people that as right now, because we're internationally accredited as key workers, we help, um, you know, it's called pest control because of the pests, so uh, pest carry diseases and illnesses that can jump over via zoonosis to humans. So I think what we do deserves so much credit. And I, I know it's a lot of people react and they're like, oh, you're pesty, that's disgusting. <laughs> and it's not so, it's not so fancy as working at yeah. Starbucks or, or whatnot, but or being in the car dealership. But uh, if you ask me, I'm so proud of our industry. And this is also the, main interest from this interview form to bring people like you to the attention of other people in our industry and also to other industries. So I'm really happy for the cross link here with food, yourself, a Tesco and pest control to be um, able to give pest control the, uh, yeah, the affirmation and uh, recognition that it deserves in our eyes. So thank you so much for the statement. That's okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like you. I think uh, I've been in pest control for a long time. I love pest control. I love the pest control industry. Um, I think for, for a, uh, an employer like my, that I have in Tesco is to understand the importance to employ somebody like myself, perhaps, and say, we want the best. We want to be the leading um, client in around how do we do things correctly? How do we... Um, how do we lead the industry? How do we make sure that we are in a position that come two, three, four years down the line, um, we still have what good looks like? Now, mm -hmm. are, we, are, we, are we really um, challenging and pushing our suppliers to actually give us the best there actually is? And, and to me, I, I, I genuinely believe that connected technology um, is and should be the way that um, the pest control industry should be should be looking, mm -hmm. and um, and I would hope that clients would embrace it and um, and take on you know the, the connected technology that's out there um, because I do think it will change, and I do think it will change to the benefit of the clients, but also to the benefit of the pest control industry as well. Yeah.
Yeah, I think so too. Tony, I would like to, um, uh, uh, um, to also inform our, our uh, viewers here and the people that read the blog post that's probably going to result from the video that we're probably going to re revisit that topic if we may with Tesco in the next couple of months or years or something to also speak to you about how you use maybe also algorithms and AI to maybe uh, uh, help get get around data better and the sheer quantity of data you sometimes have and just speak about the development of introducing digital to your company and then how you feel that that product develops in the core. Uh, absolutely. Because I, I um I don't really believe it's just around gathering data. It's having data that means something that allows um, that allows you to to give a clear message yeah. uh, and a message that's understood and can be acted upon. So, yeah. so gathering data just for the sake of it, um, I'm not a fan of. But if you get something and you can draw out from something that gives you a key message, a key learning, um, then I think it, it, it's absolutely worth its weight in gold. I, I really do. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. Cool. Um, last but not least, then um, we, we we don't want to speak about that topic too much. But you just really briefly informed me that um, the budget and the pricing issue was not such a big issue at Tesco's because some people fear it going towards digital solutions because of the price tag of it. So you told me that it was basically a big round table, and you know uh, the solution and the, the added value of the solution basically was discussed, and you know you found a compromise. So maybe you could. Talk well, about I wouldn't say it, it's it's uh, financially not uh, a challenge because I think in any organization it absolutely is. I think what Tesco's do very very well is they have somebody like me, which is is um, advising and and and. Um, and giving them a view on what really good looks like, um, and then they take that, and then they look to how does that, how can they make that work with their with their contract mm. um, financially, um, and I think um, I think that we we keep the two very very separate, and I think that in my view that's the absolute right thing. So tell me what I should do, and tell me what the best solution is, and then we'll go away and make it fit financially without 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 contract. And I think as well that, Daniel, I think with, with contractors, um, I think even though uh, my view was that they understood technology and they embraced technology and they liked technology, taking that leap to say, this is where I want my clients to go and not being um, afraid of a client rejecting it just because based on cost. Actually, you know, you can look at different modeling um, and different ways of delivering a service, which actually is a benefit to both the client and the pest control themselves. So, um, um, yeah, hopefully that answers. We, we keep things very, very separate. And, um, and I think that's absolutely the right way to do it. So what's the best solution? And then how, you know, how, how, you know people far, far better qualified than me. How do we get there? How do we get there to make that actually work? Um, yeah, and, and fortunately enough, we, we've, we've done it. And um, our business as, as Tesco's really understand the importance of sustainability and moving forward uh, and a green approach. Uh, and all of those things build into connected technology as yes. well. So there's, there's all those other elements that kind of play into this as well. Yeah. So I just have to say kudos to you and your contractor to really make that step and uh, engage and embrace digital technology. I'm sure you've worked on this many, many years. So congratulations <laughs> to being the world's first biggest uh, uh, digital pest control contract. We're definitely going to revisit that topic and are going to look like, uh, going to look uh, after um, a couple of months probably how that evolved within your business. Uh, of course, as much as you can share it from from your point of view. Absolutely. But so grateful that you took the time. So grateful that you shared that because I think it's incredibly valuable for the future pest managers and looking at where things might be headed. And uh, thank you for your internal insights so much. No problem, Daniel. It's been a pleasure. Take care. Me too. You too. Cheers now. Bye-bye.